What's going on, Ad Sales Nation? Ryan Dorn here. Hope you're doing uh, great. Thanks for joining us here, November 2017. This is the very first Ad Sales Nation podcast that we've put together, as well as recording the video uh, for those of you that need a little visual stimulation uh, as well. Thanks for all your feedback. The Sales Training World podcast uh, became so big um, that a lot of you in the ad sales world were like, hey, Ryan, what about us? You know, what's going on? What about us? We, we're where you began. Have you forgotten about us? The answer is absolutely not. Are you kidding me? Media is what I do. Advertising is what I sell. Every day, event sponsorships, B2B, uh, print media, radio, TV sponsorships. I'm selling about 50% of the time just like you. And the rest of the time, I'm doing this kind of stuff, teaching and training, which is what um, I really, really love. So we've got a great topic for you. Uh, this month's podcast here in the Ad Sales Nation. Of course, I uh, love your questions that you keep sending in. So we've got uh, questions from Mark from Columbus. Mark, you're going to be up today. Uh, Janice from Dallas. Hope it's Janice. Maybe it's Janice. Probably Janice. And then uh, Frank from Manhattan that everybody's going to want to uh, know about. So how does the podcast work? And and the way that it works is we take your listener questions. I mean, you're going to send these questions in to Ryan at RyanDorn.com. Ryan at Ryan, D-O-H is my last name, R-N.com. And we'll always have a topic every month. And we'll write about that topic as well as we'll answer uh, all of your, all of your uh, listener questions as well. So keep those coming in. Ryan at ryandorn.com. All right, big shout out to all of my friends uh, that I also consider a little bit of my extended family over in Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, folks, I was so thrilled to have you hosting me there. And those of you listening to the podcast or watching the broadcast, yes, I did work. Uh, so Honolulu Magazine, Hawaii Business, um, Hawaii Magazine, Hawaii Home and Remodeling, all the fine folks, Scott and the, the great crew, Dawn and everybody uh, over in Honolulu. Thanks for bringing me across uh, the ocean to have a wonderful time over in paradise. So if anybody else uh, wants to send me to Hawaii to work, just let me know. <laughs> Thrilled to be in so many places all around the United States in 2017, all the way from uh, you know overseas, all the way from Washington to New York City, Dallas, and places in between. Thanks so much for your support of what I do, and I appreciate it very much. All right, friends, let's get started. The topic is seven ways to boost your fall ad sales numbers. But if we're going to think about this topic more specifically, right now, most of us in the advertising business, we're selling into first quarter, which typically in the ad sales business, Q1 typically sucks. Usually it's bad. Now, not for everybody, but for a lot of us. So what can we do right now, this time of year to boost sales so as we go into Q1, we potentially have some better numbers uh, on the book. So for most advertising sales professionals, the fall really signifies a, a time of year, kind of the beginning of the end. No matter how your fiscal year falls, kind of signals the end of the year, and we don't want that to be the case. We want to roll into Q1 and Q2 of 2018 with some robust fever, fervor, and we want to make sure that we've got some good things rocking. So what you might consider is this. So let me give you seven ideas. Number one, don't believe the crowd. Number one, don't believe the crowd. Most salespeople tend to slow down this time of year. The reason is because they tend to tell me, and I hear this all the time, nobody does anything this time of year. No advertising decisions are made this time of year. Two things. Number one, that's a lie because of discretionary spending. So a lot of people have money they need to use, and or at the end of their budget year, they're going to lose it. The second piece is, if you're not selling, you should be doing something. It's a great time of year to build relationships with your clients. It's a great time of year to do so many sales-related things. So you remember Carpe Diem back from the day? Carpe Diem sees the day. That's what I like to do this time of year. This is a time of year when most salespeople come to a screeching halt. So because most people are coming to a screeching halt, I say to myself, what will I do differently today than everybody else in the media sales business? I'm gonna ramp up my sales techniques. I'm gonna ramp up my prospecting process. I'm gonna dig deep and get organized on new business development. I'm gonna dig deep on building relationships. I'm gonna go out and buy $5 Starbucks cards and send those uh, to my clients, to my prospects. I'm gonna get busy on writing handwritten letters. This is a time of year when I'm actually gonna sell harder than ever before. 
Now, some of you, you're waiting because you're hearing your clients, your advertisers say, hey, we're not going to be doing anything until our budget is approved. Well, geez, I mean, that could be May of 2018. I remember working with one of my sales reps uh, that I managed. Her name was Veronica, and Veronica is a killer salesperson. She's great. And she said, Ryan, I kept keep hearing these people saying, hey, no budget, no budget, wait until approval. And we talked together in January, February, March, April, and we're like, oh my gosh, I mean, these people are not getting their budgets approved until May. So what we did is we really structured some incentives and some programs to really get in front of these people this time of year. Really help them understand what are our features, what are our advantages, what are our benefits, what are our solutions, what's going to be new for us in 2018. We presented to them a lot of programs, good sales presentations, showed them a lot of videos, went and participated in a lot of trade shows, things like that that would help us be memorable to people. We actually um, bought these little breath mints that we handed out at trade shows that had our logo on the top. That was a big hit. We're doing things this time of year so that we always are constantly reminding people of who we are, what we're all about. So when it comes time to make those decisions, they're going to be ready to go. So the crowd would tell you, hey, let's slow down. It's a time of year around Thanksgiving, Christmas, the holidays, New Year's, nobody's doing anything. Maybe they're not buying right now unless they've got some discretionary spending, but they're definitely not sitting silent. It's a time of year to really grow relationships, which is number two for me of seven. It's a great time of year to expand client relationships. It's a time of year to make sure that we're doing holiday gifts. It's a time of year, especially around Thanksgiving, do thank you cards. I mean, Christmas cards are kind of like, really? Everyone does that. So I want to do different things. I want to send popcorn as opposed to a Christmas card, or I want to send cookies from one of my clients. Uh, This is a great time of year to be doing webinars, lunch and learns, taking clients to lunch, calling and not talking about sales, calling and talking about the industry, calling and talking about things that are important to them. Remember something, I, I really believe this, the less you sell, the more you sell. Now, I said in one of my other podcasts that I wish I could name a book that because it's true. In today's environment, the less you sell, typically, the more you sell. Here's the problem. It's a crappy title. No manager is going to buy for his team a book called Sell Less. You know, I mean, honestly, it just sounds terrible. Um, You know, if you if the book was named a killer sales technique, you know, then people would buy it. But in today's environment, when we're dealing with millennial salespeople, when we're dealing with uneducated salespeople, we're dealing with media buyers that don't know our industry or it's their first job, I really believe those of us that have been selling the longest are in the worst position because we're classically trained salespeople. And classically trained salespeople, quite honestly, are way too salesy. We're those people that might say, you know what you're thinking about today, others have been thinking about for a few weeks, we really need to close this deal. And the more we put the screws to somebody, typically the less they buy from us. So for me, the less you sell, the more you sell. And it's all about the relationships that you have. Now, a lot of times people will say, well, Ryan, millennials don't want to have a relationship with me. Okay, it's because you're old. I mean, who wants to hang out with old people, right? Nobody does. So first of all, first, first and foremost, stop hating millennials. That's the first thing. All of us that are over the age of 40 need to recognize millennials are in the workforce. They're vibrant parts of the workforce. Maybe you don't agree with their style and philosophies, but too bad. I mean, these are great people that are crazy passionate about media sales. So wrap your arms around them, maybe embrace them. I mean, I mean, you want to wrap your arms around them, you know, in a way that's appropriate. Okay, geez, with everything going on in the news. Wrap your arms around their their ideas. <laughs> Wrap your arms around their philosophies and understand maybe you are getting old. There is things to be learned from them. And also recognize that relationships are going to be a little bit harder to build with some of those buyers. So it might be sharing articles with them, might be inviting them to webinars, uh, it might be doing uh, lunch and learns where there's education as a part of it. Whatever the circumstance is, you want to make sure that you're really looking to grow your client relationships this time of year. All right, number three of seven, don't stop prospecting. This is not a time of year to stop prospecting. Well, Ryan, nobody's buying this time of year, so why would I prospect? Well, the reason you need to prospect is because statistically, we are going to have to reach out to people 15 to 20 times is is my experience to get them to make a decision 
to even have a conversation with us. So if we recognize this fall right now that we actually need to have 15 or 20 touches before they make a decision even to have a meeting with us, we need to start right now. So many of you have heard me talk about either my big 50 process or my top 20 process. When I'm dealing with advertisers, I recognize that I need to follow a format. I need to follow a plan. So let me tell you about the top 20. The top 20 program I teach when I come to your office or whatever is 20 total clients. There's five days in the week. There's four clients per day. Now, before you managers kill me, that's not enough, okay? Understand, I'm about quality. I'm not about quantity. I do understand the numbers game. I get it. But I'm about quality conversations, quality touch points, quality phone calls, quality emails, all right? So what I'm asking every sales rep to do is to reach out in a very robust way with a mini marketing plan to four brand new clients every day. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't reach out to more. My big 50 that I teach is 10 per day times five days is 50. My top 20 is four per day times five days in the week. They're a little bit different. The top 20 program is really focused on high quality touch points. The big 50 is more, more targeted towards templates. So you can do a higher quantity. Both of them are going to be specific. Both of them are going to be good and quality results will come from that. But here's what everybody needs to understand. By nature, most of us are not highly disciplined people. I mean, we're just not. So by nature, we're not. So because of that, in our sales life, we need to be highly disciplined. And that's where the top 20 and the big 50 list come. Now, if you want to learn more about that, check out my book, Selling Backwards on Amazon. Uh, buy, it, buy it for yourself as a gift or check out the training videos that are here on the, on the website over at 360adsales.com, 360 adsales.com. But don't forget, you, you don't never want to stop prospecting, especially this time of year. All right, number four of seven, reignite that fire that, that's, that got you selling in the first place. It's a gloomy time of year. I mean, I live in South Carolina. I mean, we're not going to get temperatures below the 40s very often. It's still as cold and it's still gloomy. I mean, well, cold. No, I don't need any hate mail from all of you people in New York. Okay, I understand New York, Minnesota. I understand it's colder there than it is here. I get it. Bismarck, North Dakota. All my friends there. I know it's cold there too. I get it. Real cold. But for me, it's a gloomy time of year. So because the days are shorter, we go to work in the dark, we come home in the dark, it's gloomy. And so we tend to lose our fire, our passion for selling. That's what we've really got to be careful about. The passion that we have or don't have translates to our prospects and to our active clients in the advertising business. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Ryan, this is a great time of year for me. Um, we do retail, sell a ton of business. December is great for us. I, I understand that. I'm talking about Q1 and Q2. Boost your fall numbers, boost your activity in the fall to drive Q1 and Q2 because typically in the advertising business, first quarter is typically not all that great for most of us. In the magazine business, in the TV business, it can be okay. Radio tends to be a little slow. So for those of us in the ad sales space, it's important to understand we might need to find the fire, the fire. So this is what I would ask you if I was coaching you. And if you need a sales coach, reach out. I've I just hired a new guy on my team. His name is John. And John's an amazing coach, a veteran. He, he's a great coach. Here's what he might ask you. He might say, go back in time and tell me what excited you about your job when you first started would be something that he would ask because a good coach is going to ask great questions. All right. So then he might say, okay, think about this differently. Go back in time and think about what got you excited to sell this product in the beginning. When you first started, what got you excited? It's sort of like when you're having, when you're struggling with a relationship and a counselor might say to you, Hey, let's go back. Let's figure out what did you love about this person in the beginning? Has that changed or have you changed? Have they changed? And go back and find find that fire, find that passion. A lot of times when I'm working with a media sales professional, I'll realize very quickly that they've lost their passion for selling. We've got to go back and find what was it that got them excited? What was happening in their life? What was it about their clients that got them excited? What were they doing? What was their time frame like? What was their schedule like? Um, what were they eating then? What were they drinking then? Or what were they smoking then? Or, you know, whatever. 
It's a joke, people. What what was happening in their life at that time that helped them fall in love with the media business in general or what they're selling? So this time of year, number four of seven, reignite that fire for what you're selling because that passion comes through to your prospects and to your clients. All right, number five, you're not going to like. Number five, I'm warning you now. Number five, you will not like. Number five is clean up your CRM tool. This is a great time of year when things slow down just a touch to get inside your CRM tool and really, really clean it up. Now, if you're saying it's not your responsibility, I don't know what to tell you. Um, For everybody that I work with, garbage in, garbage out. Um, I try to spend at least one hour each month cleaning up my CRM, reprioritizing people, putting them in groups and lists, tagging them correctly or whatever the circumstance is. So a lot of you wait until spring cleaning season. I do this right now. I spend time around the holidays when things slow down to not go and just drink a bunch of eggnog. I spend time doing tasks and activities that will really benefit my sales life. Here's what you will find. All too often what I find is problems. I find problem child clients. Most importantly, I find people I forgot about. So I use this activity this time of year to really figure out, okay, who am I missing? This is a time of year to run missing advertiser reports. It's a time of year to reprioritize people under your top 20 or big 50 priority, uh, whatever, however your CRM is set up. Um, for my magazine clients, I use a product called the Magazine Manager. I want to go into my priorities, change them from active to inactive or prospect or whatever. Um, Whatever CRM tool you use, the point that I'm trying to get across is is a time of year to get the data cleaned up and so that you can be more efficient. All right. All right. Number six of seven ways to drive your fall numbers and drive numbers into Q1 and Q2 uh, to get them better. Really dig deep on your professional development. Dig deep on your professional development. And the reason this is important is because this is a time of year when people are asking for gifts. Uh, what do you want? What do you want for Christmas? And I love getting books. Um, I read a lot on my phone and on my iPad, but I also like hardbound books as well. So, you know, what what are some good books for your life that you can grow from? What I do, I go over each year to Inc.com, Inc.com, and all you need to do is is search for best books, best business books. Um, if you if you search for this specifically, you'll get a good list. Twenty seven books, um, and if you search for twenty seven books, you're going to find a story uh, that Christina, I think it's Desmaris, wrote about twenty seven books that successful executives say inspired them the most. But if you search for twenty seven books, or Christina, um, and her last name is spelled D E S M A R. AIS. There's a great list there. And I think those are all books that you would want uh, on your Christmas shopping list. When you're digging deep on your professional development, you're watching webinars, you're listening to this podcast. Those that are highly successful in the ad sales business are always looking to grow. Those that are not are those people that think they know it all. And now you might be one of those people that's like, hey, I don't have time for that or whatever. I make time to grow every day. I try to, I've begun keeping a journal, which has been tough for me, but I'm trying that. I'm reviewing all of my goal setting. I've created a focus chart for myself. I mean, all of these kind of things to reframe my brain and try to get myself really highly in tune this time of year so that I go into Q1 and I go into Q2 very, very strong. So dig deep on your professional development. Rather than just sitting around over the holidays and watching a bunch of movies, uh, curl up next to the fire with a good business book. I mean, you, you might think, Ryan, that's crazy, but whether you're drinking eggnog and watching a movie or drinking eggnog and, and reading a good business book, I encourage you to at least read one. Report back to me, all right? I'd love to hear um, how that went for you as you roll through this holiday season. All right, number seven, then we're going to get to your listener uh, questions. Number seven is very, very important. Number seven is plan out your 2017 wish list. Number seven is plan out your 20, or I'm sorry, your 2018 wish list is what it should be. Plan out your 2018 wish list. And what I mean by that is I want you to think about who are the five or 10 people. 10 is usually a good number. Who are the 10 people that you want to have in 2018 
on your client list. Now, don't make them all whales, because if they're all whales, it's going to be a little bit hard to manage. Have a few minnows, have a few cod, have a few whales, have three different types of fish there, and plan out that list of 10. Begin to think about, what can I do now to create a mini marketing plan to put my name, my company name, my publication, my TV station, my radio station, my website, whatever, in front of these people so that as we get ready to go into 2018, they'll be thinking about me. Now, some of you are smart enough to recognize this time of year right now, the month of November, is when agencies need your stuff. Absolutely accurate. You are absolutely right. What I found, though, is the need for November, the need to have things done in November is actually stretching into December in January as people are finalizing budgets and finalizing planning. So it's not too late to be thinking about who do I want on my 2018 wish list? And then what am I doing from a mini marketing perspective to put my brand, my name in front of them? Is it putting your magazine with a post-it note handwritten in a manila envelope that you hand address and sending it to somebody? If you're in the radio business, is it sending somebody some earbuds that have your logo on the little case that you can buy online for five bucks and send them to them with a note? Is it handwritten thank you notes to them or a handwritten note? Is it a $5 Starbucks card? Is it a gift certificate to Buffalo Wild Wings for, say, $15 and you say, hey, have lunch on me? Um, but if you invite me to lunch, you know, I'll buy you lunch twice or something or those type of things that are creative, sending popcorn to people from 1-800-Flowers.com. I would avoid flowers, you know, and Sherry's berries are awesome. Um, that's something that people really, really love. So there's a lot of little tokens and gifts that you can put in front of people to get your name and your brand in front of them. Remember, creative people typically like creative sales strategies. One of the things overall that's important as we think about all seven of these ideas is really to understand more than anything, this is a time of year to sell. It's not a time of year to slow down. Those that slow down, I will outsell you because I'm not going to stop. I'm going to use your lack of ambition <laughs> this time of year to run around you or run over top of you. So number one, don't believe the crowd. The crowd is going to tell you nothing happens this time of year, so don't slow down. Number two, find ways to expand relationships, conference calls, uh, media get-togethers, talking about media planning and strategy. Those types of things are amazing this time of year. Number three, don't stop prospecting. Refine your process. Come up with a new process. Don't stop prospecting this time of year. Number four, you will fall into a rut if you let yourself do that. So number four is really reigniting your passion for what it is that you're selling. All right, five of seven, clean up your CRM. You, you just got to do it. If your CRM is perfect, then work on templates, work on other things, clean up your computer, whatever it is, but you, you've got to really clean up your CRM. All right, number six, dig deep on your, on your professional development. Dig deep, ask for books for Christmas, attend webinars, those type of things. And then number seven, plan out your 2018 wish list. It's so important for you to understand, you really have to plan ahead for 2018. Who are the, the people that you want to see on your wish list? All right, cool. So there's seven ideas for you. Um, now my favorite part of our program every month is answering listener questions. So let's check those out. We've got one from Mark in Columbus, Janice. Uh, in Dallas and Frank in Manhattan, we got your three questions. So I'll be sure to send uh, you guys a brand new spiffy Ad Sales Nation t-shirt. Uh, if you would, Mark, Janice, Frank, reach out to me. Let me know what size I can send your way. So, Okay, Mark from Columbus. Mark from Columbus asks, Ryan, my sales manager is a little bit of a jerk and wants all of our notes in the CRM every day. Any shortcuts that you have? Well, first of all, Mark, at first, your, your boss very well may, may be a jerk. I don't know who that person is, okay? But what they're asking you to do is not necessarily uncommon. It's really important to recognize, all of us, for us to recognize that these are not our clients. These are our company's clients. And so if you were to win the lottery, Mark, would you come back to work? If you were to get hit by the proverbial bus, would you come back to work? How many of us have walked into a sales job and there's been no notes on previous clients? 
That's a problem. And so it's a fundamental problem because you cross the street or drive your car every day, Mark, and God forbid something was to happen to you, the person behind you would not know what had happened. I hope that never happens. If you win the lottery, you're probably not coming back to work. I'm not. If I win a big enough lottery, you will never hear my name again, you know? And so I don't think that this boss is a jerk for asking you to do that. So your question really was shortcuts. Yeah, I've got a lot of shortcuts. Two things for you. Number one, I take notes directly into the CRM when I'm having sales meetings on my iPad. I simply ask my client, do you mind if I take notes during our conversation? Of course, you're gonna say, sure, no problem. Do you mind if I take the notes on my iPad? Most people don't care. So what I'll do is I'll use my stylus. Where's my stylus at? I usually have it right here. Where'd it go? Okay, usually I have it right here. And so here we go, here's my stylus. So I use my stylus and I use Evernote and I take notes on my iPad. You can type them if you want. And then I take those and translate those just with a couple clicks into text format, copy and paste that into my CRM. The other thing that I do is I use the microphone built into my computer and I have dictation software installed on my computer. And so I can actually go and then put the cursor in the notes box on the, uh, on the computer. I can click the microphone and I can dictate directly into the computer. So I might take written notes. You can see that I've got like a whole page of written notes here. After I was done, I went and put the, uh, the cursor there and then just dictated the notes into the CRM. So whatever CRM that you use, I think it's important to keep your notes accurate. Plus, for all of those those of you like me over the age of forty, wow, I am uh, I'm amazed at how much I forget. Let me just let me just leave it there. I'm amazed at how much I forget. So, good question, Mark, from Columbus, Ohio. All right, Janice, and I hope it's Janice, not Janice. It's spelled a little bit uniquely, so I love that unique spelling. Janice will say Janice, and if it's wrong, then uh, let me know, and, and I'll owe you something else. Janice from Dallas. Uh, she writes, I'm not hearing as much about social media as an advertising alternative anymore. What's up with that? So I'm guessing, Janice, I wish I had you on the phone. I'd love to get a little more detail from you because I hear about social media all of the time from advertisers. They're moving to digital. They've moved to digital. Facebook is their holy grail or whatever. The reason in your market, the Dallas-Fort Worth market, maybe you're not hearing about it as much anymore is because the social media landscape is highly cluttered very, very cluttered. So it's possible the reason you're not hearing about it is a lot of local business owners are, are tired of it. They're not getting the results that they once got. Statistically, if I look at a recent article from Forbes.com, we see that Facebook is in another uh, negative year of active user growth, meaning users that are highly active, yet their audiences still remain quite large. So I think it's important to recognize that social media in general is, is changing. It's very crowded. It's also quite expensive. Cost per click advertising has jumped almost 200% according to marketingprofs.com has jumped almost two to 300% over the last three or four years, depending upon the platform that you choose. It used to be five bucks. You could boost a post on Facebook and kill it. Now, you know, you're looking at around 20 bucks. So it's not as cheap as it once was. Also, I think people are tired of the time commitment. Our advertisers are flat out just getting tired of the time commitment that it takes. I was reading an article on Inc.com a few months back, and the article was very specific to note that successful marketers, they're going to spend 15 to 20 hours per week managing their social media. Now, you maybe you hire somebody to do that, but that's expensive. So I'm going to guess, Janice, probably that's why you're hearing about it. Now, one of the cool things about our media products, magazines, newspapers, radio, TV, media products, and one of the reasons that I love being a part of this ad sales nation of people like us is because we are unique right now. Um, we are unique. We've got a lot of inventory typically that's available. Um, if an advertiser is looking to own share of voice in the market, they can buy a lot of affordable space with us for most of us. So I think that's an important piece. Even national publications that I'm working with are seeing an uptick in sales because digital is awesome. I love digital, but quite honestly, people are, are spending less and less time paying attention in the digital space. And that's why national TV 
and national publications, magazines are doing a little bit better right now. So I think we want to own it. We want to really help people understand digital is crowded. It's getting more expensive. And sure, they can say all the time, well, I don't get return on an investment from print. I always ask, but what does that mean to you? Tell Tim, when you say you don't get ROI, what were you expecting to have happen? I mean, you sell a $5,000 medical device. What were you expecting when you ran that print ad? Were you expecting to immediately get 50 phone calls? I mean, that's not how buyers operate in today's environment. So, all right, good question, Janice from Dallas. Love the Metroplex down there. Spent a lot of time in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And uh, lots of good friends down there. All right, next question, Frank from Manhattan. Shout out to all my friends in uh, at all the media companies in Manhattan. I, I'm there almost every month. Love the New York City area. All right, so... <laughs> Forgive me. I'm just going to read this the way it was sent to me um, because I think it's kind of funny. Frank says, my boss is a phone sales old fart. No one uses the phone to sell anymore. Am I right? Is he wrong? What should I do? So first of all, Frank, thanks (laughs) for the question. I appreciate it. And um, it sounds like you're dealing with a veteran seller uh, that is a phone guy. So here's the bad news for you, Frank. Uh, As much as I love your brother, The phone does still work. It's a differentiating factor. Is it the way that most people prefer to sell? No. Is it the way most people prefer to receive information? No. But I've done a lot of different testings with me testing with media groups, large and small across around the world, across the United States. Those salespeople that use a model of phone and email, so they back each other up. Those media salespeople that do that typically do better than those that do email only. Now, I don't think that you're saying that your boss, your your older boss here, is wanting you to do only phone sales. If, if that's what he's saying, then I would say that that strategy is old school. Doesn't mean it, it can't work, but using email as a part of your phone strategy is where I see the vast majority of success. The other thing to recognize is I have a lot of clients that like to be texted. And I'm not a big texter as it relates to clients' uh, sales, but I do know a lot of people that are texting more with their phones. I think the important piece to recognize is, if you want to keep your job, Frank, is that you want to be respectful of your boss. You want to potentially try some new things. You want to involve some of your newer technology or ideas with what he wants from you. If you're not a good fit for that group and for his style, there's a lot of media sales jobs looking for really good professionals. If you don't have a good stylistic fit, but if you like the product you're selling, I would focus in on, hey, what can I learn from this guy? He has learned, uh, you know, for for quite some, he's, he's sold rather for quite some time. What can I learn from him? And then just understand that phone is not dead. Uh, a lot of salespeople are trying to tell me that it's being preached online by a lot of different folks that um, that phone sales is dead. I actually have not I'm not seeing that in my own sales life, but I am seeing a, a hybrid email and phone. When I can get someone to a phone meeting or to a go to meeting meeting, then I always close more deals. I also think it's become very expected uh, for you to share a go to meeting link when you're going to be meeting with a prospect. So I think that's uh, that's very important. So, all right, Frank, Janice, Mark, I'll send you an Ad Sales Nation t-shirt. So email me, let me know your sizes on that or somebody from the team will. Keep your questions coming in. Ryan at RyanDorn.com, D-O-H-R-N, Ryan at RyanDorn.com. All right, friends. Well, that's our show for the month of November. I like to always spend 30, 40 minutes with you sharing some insights, some ideas. Hopefully that will encourage you. Uh, don't forget, if you want me to come to your office or to your conference or whatever uh, in 2018, I book up almost six months in advance. So thank you for all your business. I'm very blessed to be busy. Appreciate all of you. Remember, you can find us online at 360adsales.com, 360 adsales.com uh, and uh, you can also find us online at brainswellmedia.com my email address is ryan at ryandorn.com well, i hope you enjoy the ad sales nation podcast and broadcast we'll keep doing it for you each and every month starting now all through 2018 if you'd like to be on the show with me and like to have your questions answered live reach out to me ryan at ryandorn.com all right friends don't forget if ad sales was easy everybody be doing it 
Okay, and they're not. So we're either crazy, <laughs> or or we found a career uh, that will feed our families for a lifetime. All right, get out there and sell something so that your boss can afford to bring me into your office. We can have some fun uh, together. If I can help you, reach out to me online. Until then, we'll see you out on the street. God bless everybody. Take care and happy holidays. By the way, take care. <laughs>